Hey you guys, it's Peter, and welcome to my channel, Peterisms. Pee-Pee's a little guest star today. He's feeling, he's feeling good today, aren't you, Ben? He says, I do not like the cold on my paw, paw, paws. Anyway, um, I was trying to think of a video to do today, you know, some kind of story from my past, and I was like thinking about New Year's Eve's of the past and those kinds of things, and I thought, I'm gonna tell the story. I've talked about it pretty much at length on my vlog, but I've never shared it on here about my New Year's Eve when I was in treatment, the year that I got uh, sober. So uh, this is New Year's Eve, 1994, going into 1995. And um, it was very much a different New Year's than I had ever had before. And New Year's before, you know, like when I was, I, I was thinking a lot about New Year's Eve, you know, today. And when I was a little kid, I was always either with my mom or my dad, obviously, but like since they were divorced, you know, at, when I was such, such a young age, um, you know, I would be with my mom one year, my dad the next year, and when I was with my mom, we would, like, watch a movie, something, you know, Gone with the Wind, Sound of Music, some epic movie, and then we would go outside at midnight and, like, bang pans and make noises, and that was pretty much it. There was really not that big of a deal, you know? Um, and when I was with my dad, we would, you know, watch Times Square, and he would, like, make New York strip steaks and wild rice and spinach souffle. I don't know why I remember this. Anyway, but, um... And then we would always get on, like, the, you would, like, call in to, like, the movie channel. <laughs> he had the movie channel cable. And you called in and you would vote for one of two movies. And you would vote for either Arthur or you would vote for, um, like, Stripes or something like that. And I just, I, I don't know why I'm remembering this as I'm just sitting here. My dad texted me the other day. I have to see if I can. And he said something in here about it, um, about... Um, he says, um, I hope you're watching Arthur for New Year's and having a chocolate sundae. Because I guess, like, we would always make these chocolate sundaes. And um, it's so funny he remembers that. Because we would always vote for Arthur. We were, like, praying that the movie Arthur with Dudley Moore is the one that would get the most votes so we could watch that. Anyway, um, but I was thinking about when I got older, you know, like, even in high school and college, like, all of my New Year's were very much about drinking, and I don't remember any of those New Year's, like, past probably 11 o'clock. And in fact, one of my friends and I, we went to Chicago one year for New, uh, for New Year's, and I remember both of us getting kicked out of this bar. It was called Berlin. I don't, I don't even know if it still exists or not. But we were um, at Berlin, and we got kicked out. And um, I remember us, like, being freezing cold on the streets and not knowing how to get back to the hotel. And that was, you know, pretty much what my New Year's looked like until I got sober at 22. So the year that I got sober, the treatment facility that I went to was just part of many treatment facilities and 12-step programs in Indianapolis. And Indianapolis has a huge 12-step community. I mean, huge, right? And um, every year, one of the 12-step programs would have a huge New Year's dance. And the dance would start with kind of like this elegant dinner, and then like everybody would get dressed up. And then at 11 o'clock, they would do a sor uh, sobriety countdown, which means that everybody gets in a circle. And then the person with the, like, the most time, so if somebody had 58 years, they would stand up and say, you know, hi, I'm Peter. And then it would go all the way down to the person with the least amount of time. And that person could even have six hours sober, 12 hours or 24 hours. And then they get together and they have the person with the most time get together with the person with the, it's really powerful, you guys. Like, I don't even know how to explain the emotions that I'm feeling, but to see that is super, super powerful. And, um... You, know, you see how life can change through something like that. And then everybody does, you know, a, a prayer, a group prayer, like 12-step programs do at midnight. And then this huge party starts, and it's dancing and all this kind of stuff to a live band. And it's really, they're really fun, you know? And we're talking hundreds of people come to these things. Well, I thought I needed to get my hair cut for this thing. So I went to, and so like the treatment facility that I went to, if you were like on a rehab level, they paid for your ticket and they took everybody to this dance and they basically paid for you to go. And um, so I went to my counselor, I think on like the 30th and it was, I, it was like her last day there. And I said, um, do you think that I could have like somebody come in here and cut my hair or like my hairstylist or somebody before I go to the new year's dance? And I'll never forget. She just kind of looked at me and she was like, what? And I said, can I have my, like, my hairstylist or somebody come in here and cut my hair before the New Year's dance? And she said, um, no, princess. And she said, in fact, I still, she's a good friend of mine today, and I still joke with her about this. She said, in fact, since you think that you're so unique and so special, 
and that you have different qualifications for what you deserve or need by instead of other people, then you can stay here and learn a very important, you know, a important fact about life is that you are not unique. And so I was like, are you kidding me? And she's like, yeah, you're not going to the New Year's dance. So I stayed back in the New Year's dance. Basically, it was me and the people that were like on detox levels and couldn't leave. So it was really just me because everybody from the rehab unit had left. And I remember I watched the, uh, you know, ball drop in Times Square and I was like on the phone with all my friends, but none of them were really answering their phones because they were out having fun without me. And I was pissed and I was bitter, right? And my friend had brought me, I feel like I just talked actually maybe about something to do with this, but my friend had bought me like every Michael Crichton book because I was obsessed with Michael Crichton's books um, that year. And like, I, there was like six or eight of them. I read all of them, like just boom, 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 like Sphere, Jurassic Park, all of them back to back. And I had read the last one and, oh, I talked about my first day sober or my first meeting and uh, I said how it was blizzard condition so you couldn't get out. So I'll never forget I went up to this guy at the counter and I said, um, I probably am overlapping. I probably have told some of the stories, but this is New Year. So I went up to this guy and I said, who ended up being a friend of mine when I worked at the very same treatment program. He said, um, I said, hey, Clyde, I said, do you guys have any good books back there to read? And he threw down this 12-step book, right? And he was like, yeah, why don't you try this? And I was like, how rude, seriously? And I went to the kitchen or the cafeteria, and it, all the lights were turned off, and it was just snowing like crazy outside. And I turned the lights on in the kitchen, and they would always put out, like, a meat of, like, uh, or a, a, a tray of, like, loose leaf, leaf loose leaf, they would put a tray out of like turkey and ham and stuff and you could make sandwiches and then they would have like potato salad and pie and cookies and stuff like that so you could have like a snack late at night for those people that couldn't sleep because a lot of addicts and alcoholics have really hard times getting to sleep. I still do. My sleep schedule is still screwed up. And um, so, you know, I made like three sandwiches and I sat down there with like some chocolate milk in the cafeteria and I started reading this book and um, I don't know what happened, you know, like I don't. I'm such a believer that when opportunity meets destiny, you know, that like something changes in the world. I had read the book many, many times before and it had never had any, it had never had any impact on my life, you know? And there was something about how peaceful and how serene that cafeteria, I mean, a hospital cafeteria, you know, with the lights off and me just sitting there reading and eating these turkey sandwiches and how simple that seemed to me at the time, you know? That I had really fucked my life up for so long and it just was like this really ugly life. And that really the simplicity of reading this book that was so powerful and to hear somebody else's story, you know? Well, it's snowing and I'm going in and out and smoking cigarettes and drinking this chocolate milk and just that moment of how peaceful and serene was, something changed in there. And um, if you watch my vlog, you know that I, I believe in not violating the rules or the traditions of that 12-step program and so I don't talk to it uh, or mention of it whatsoever. But there's a part in the book and it says that... Um, it's the very last paragraph of the basic text. And it says something to the effect of um, that we hope you trudge the road of happy destiny and we will surely meet some of you along the way. And when I read that, you know, like completely alone in this treatment program, no friends, no family checking in on me. I felt so very alone and I thought there are other people that have gone through this before me that know what this is going to be like, you know. And um, I didn't feel so all alone reading that anymore. And I read the entire book, um, every page of it. I don't know why I'm crying so much. I read every page of it. Um, it's not like a sad cry. It's like a, a cry of just like overwhelming joy, you know, that what a gift I was given. And that is why every year going into the new year, I always look at it as like the spiritual change, this opportunity for growth, this opportunity to, for like rebirth and reinvention, you know? And for the addict or the alcoholic that is out there that is still suffering, please, I say to you, you know, take this as a lesson that you can have the most amazing life possible. Today, as you watch this video, you can say, I'm going into 2018. I'm going into 2018 clean and sober. I will not let this be my life anymore. Do the things that you need to do to do that in a healthy way. You know, if you're using on a daily basis, you probably just can't stop. You need some kind of treatment. It's very medically dangerous. You know, reach out to friends and family member that can help you. But make a change. If you have friends or family around you, stand up and say, I love you enough to know that I don't want this life for you anymore. Show them this video. They can have the amazing life that I have. And it has to chart, start somewhere and it has to start somewhere small. And I'm so thankful for that New Year's. You know, like, I, I, I'm a believer that, like, it's like when, any, when anything happens in your life, you know, 
I was just watching this on this Oprah aha moment last night. It's like, Maya Angelou said to her, when you are going through any major tragedy in your life or something doesn't go your way, look up and say thank you because you're going to be a given a gift down the road. You know, and that day that I was feeling sorry for myself and I just wanted out of that stupid hospital and I, my attitude sucked and I just wanted to go to this dance and, you know, drink some real coffee and, you know, I don't know, get out of the world, you know, for a little bit. My needing to be so superficial and so selfish to have my hair cut is what taught me the greatest lesson in my life. Had I not sat in that cafeteria that night and read that first 164 pages, I would not be sitting here tonight. Fact. I know that as a fact. So sometimes when we go through the worst parts of our entire life, sometimes when we're going through the worst moments of our life and we don't know, we can't see the peace in it, we can't see the beauty in it, we have to look up and say thank you because there is going to be a gift that comes from that. I love you guys. I hope you're having a wonderful end to 2017. 2018 is going to be an amazing year. and I'm so excited about it. I love you guys, and I will talk to you later. Bye.